thanks. And thanks, Elizabeth, uh, for that really interesting presentation. And I need this. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be talking about some research uh, I've been doing. I'm in the philosophy department. Um, my advisor's in the philosophy and biology departments. And we uh, work on biodiversity conservation. And so I'm going to be talking about issues of human values and uh, cooperation in uh, systematic conservation planning, which is this scientific protocol that has been developed for uh, planning for biodiversity conservation. So first I'll just talk a little bit about the goals of systematic conservation planning and how human values play into those, and then talk about two ethical problems, um, the problem of trade-offs between different values and then problem of uh, cooperation between rational agents. So uh, the main, one of the main goals is that you want to represent uh, biodiversity features of the landscape. So what are biodiversity features? Well, they go up and down the biological hierarchy. So you might want ecological diversity. Here's the Texas Hill Country um, and then the Pacific Northwest. Um, you might want species diversity. Here's two endangered songbirds, uh, the black cap vireo on the right and the golden cheek warbler on the left that are uh, pr federally protected in central Texas. Um, you might want genetic diversity. So these are wild dogs in South Africa that have been translocated uh, for gene flow um, by conservation biologists. You also might want biocultural diversity. Here are two very different um, human groups who have the same biocultural practice of herding uh, cattle. So on the right, you have an East Texas uh, rancher, and on the left, some Maasai people from uh, Tanzania, East Africa. Um, second goal uh, is persistence or sustainability. But uh, before I go into that, I just want to say all of those things, right, th that depends on what we value, right? So what biodiver biodiversity features we do want to conserve on the landscape, that's a question of human values. Um, the second uh, goal is persistence or what you know everyone here would call sustainability. Um, this is just a, a graph showing how if you want to uh, preserve populations of large carnivores, you need large parks. Um, uh, and, and thirdly, the, uh, an important goal is economy. So we want to do this with um, the least, uh, using the least societal resources as we can because there are all sorts of legitimate uses of a landscape um, and biodiversity conservation is just one. Okay, so um, coming to some ethical issues. So this is just a really simple uh, sort of logic diagram. So um, if you're looking at a landscape and you're thinking about more or less conservation or more or less economic use, um, a lot of governments and NGOs and corporations want to talk about win-win solutions. Um, where you have you know, more conservation and more economic development or something like that, those in practice are extremely difficult to achieve. Usually what you're going to end up with is some sort of trade-off um, between the two. Um, so an example of this is, uh, comes from a case study that we, we were looking at in Costa Rica. Um, uh, in Corcovado National Park, which is on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, and is one of the only remaining lowland tropical uh, rainforests in, in all of Central America. And uh, in the mid-80s, um, United Fruit uh, left uh, Palmar del Norte um, in the region uh, due to labor unrest, and there were thousands of unemployed uh, rural people. And about a 1,000 of them decided to come to Corcovado to pursue gold mining opportunities because there's a lot of gold there. and um, they're, they were experiencing a sort of spike in the price of gold, as we are now. Um, and uh, some Western or uh, American um, NGOs and scientists went in there and did a study and decided, you know, they're doing damage to the ecosystem, so we have to kick them out. Um, and, I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting case study, and I'm still researching it. I'm not sure kind of whether it was handled with... Uh, um, the kind of care towards social justice that you might want. Maybe they should have left, uh, let some of them stay. Um, but um, ultimately, this just points to uh, this issue of, you know, trying to trade off these different values. We want biodiversity conservation. We want rural people to have jobs. Um, and, and a lot of these people also thought that um, what the government was doing was basically selling a part of Costa Rica to foreigners basically, to foreign scientists, many of whom are at UT. Um, 
And this is a deep, uh, there's a deep philosophical assumption here, which is that these values are actually commensurable. And part of uh, my dissertation work is looking at how uh, these values um, get um, put onto sort of common scales in decision analysis uh, for conservation. Um, the second issue of ethics I want to talk about is cooperation. So a lot of you might be familiar with this, pr the prisoner's dilemma, which is a very simple model of a dilemma of cooperation where it would be great if we could both cooperate and get our second best outcome, but each of us has an individual incentive to defect um, because no matter, like, so look at, uh, look at row players payoffs, which are in gray. No matter what a uh, column player does, I can get a better outcome for myself by, by defecting. So I get my first as opposed to my second best and my third best as opposed to my worst. But if we both do this, we end up, uh, we both end up with our third best outcome. Um, so we, we both have an individual incentive to defect, but uh, it actually ends up being worse for both of us. So an example of this is overfishing in coral reefs. Um, it's a sort of tragedy of the commons uh, situation. Um, and uh, particularly, we're looking at a case in the Philippines where um, fishermen had a strong economic incentive to use destructive fi fishing methods. These are reefs that uh, support hundreds of species that are economically valuable. And, um, and, and these fishermen can make very cheap, basically homemade bombs to use for fishing that you know, can t uh, make 10 times the amount um, of money per day as they would make using traditional methods. Um, and, but what this does is it destroys the reef. So here on the right you see a bleached, um, a degraded reef, probably from cyanide fishing or explosive fishing. So this can be given this kind of um, game theoretic analysis where, you know, we're just thinking about two fishermen here, but, you know, you could either limit, you could either limit your fishing take or maximize your short-term take, and what happens is uh, everyone um, ends up, uh, uh, because they have an individual incentive, um, they end up using these destructive methods and destroying the reef. Um, there are all sorts of solutions to these um, uh, tragedy of the commons style situations that have been discussed in the social science literature, uh, economic incentives, the state can enforce conservation, or you could have a sort of community-based um, system where you, uh, people mutually enforce these conservation norms. Um, and part of our research is looking at which is preferable and in what context and teasing out some of these difficult empirical and normative issues. Um, but clearly any solution, if it's going to be sustainable, uh, is going to have to uh, have an eye towards social justice. Thank you.